Surprisingly, playing Titanfall without a pilot's tools is incredibly enjoyable. I suspect this is mostly unknown to a large portion of Titanfall's fanbase, but it has a very significant modding scene. Titanfall is born out of the Source engine, and so is inherently extremely moddable to those with the technical know-how. There are two main modding frameworks, Icepick and Northstar. The main difference that normal people will actually care about is that Northstar is multiplayer compatible, whereas Icepick is not. Northstar has a wide array of entirely community-hosted servers which can vary from the default gameplay pretty wildly due to its increased flexibility. And one of those is Grunt Mode, originally created by Voyage DB, now maintained and developed by Ender. On the surface, this seems like the, uh, let's be frank, the absolute worst way to play a Titanfall. The game's main selling point is the fantastic movement and dynamic between pilots and titans, but I'm surprised to say that Respawn genuinely needs to take note of Ender's grunt mode. I think it's important to give the context that when I went into this mode originally, my expectations were not very high. I expected to play it for 10 minutes on a private server and then never touch it again. I did not expect to say that I want this to be Titanfall 3. I would go as far to say that this is the natural progression of attrition as a game mode. There's a lot more depth to it than might seem obvious at first. It's way more than just stripping you of your movement options and having you fight bots. If you've ever played Battlefront 2, you're gonna feel right at home. It's a very identical system without the impressive budget siphoning character selection screen. Starting off as a grunt and attrition sounds completely miserable, but it gave me something that I never knew I wanted in Titanfall, which is a sense of scale. Coming in on a drop pod, starting with no double jump, no wall run, and no tactical, gives a lot of perspective towards later when you've cashed in enough points to spawn in as a pilot with their prolonged dropship spawn sequence. It adds into multiplayer the same juxtaposition of power that you get in the first minutes of the campaign, starting as a grunt and then gradually becoming a pilot shortly after. You can truly appreciate the added freedom that a pilot's mobility options offer them when you don't start with them. There are a good handful of classes to choose from, with grunts and specters feeling very distinctly different with only one major change aside from health. Spectres can double jump. They still can't wall run like a pilot, but the double jump is intended to mimic the kind of hilariously ridiculous jumps you can watch AI spectres make at times. If you eventually get to be a pilot, you'll be right at home with all of your mobility options that you're used to, a cloak that lasts significantly longer as portrayed in cinematics, and a permanently amped R707, about mimicking the default time to kill. Manage a 10-player killstreak as a grunt, and you might even be able to play an elite pilot. The players aren't the only thing that's changed, and the battlefield in which they inhabit is drastically different from vanilla attrition. There are unused enemies from the campaign like drones and shield grunts, as well as far more of the unique enemies like stalkers. For the record, I think the adjustments to spawn rates in this mode are an objective improvement over the vanilla game. Their spawn rates aren't the only thing that's different, though. All of their stats have been adjusted to reinforce the fantasy of this being a more boots-on-the-ground experience. Everyone takes far more rounds to put down, and TTK is way up. Later in matches, you might even find a titan in the battlefield, and the dynamic between them and you is so distinctly different from a grunt's perspective. Instead of being free, walking titan charge, they're a no-go zone. All titans are AI-controlled, dropping in separately from their pilot who actually paths to the deployed titans and then gets in, which is incredibly impressive. The battlefield is a complicated place, so their 2016 AI does get stuck on pebbles often, but just seeing the AI pilot models used at all made me squeal a little. They were originally enemies from the campaign, with unique animations that ended up getting cut because, uh, 1987. There are no player-controlled titans, which, while disappointing at first, was the correct choice. If they were controlled by people, they would completely stop anyone else in the match having any fun as they get lasered instantly by a player-controlled tone. AI titans are admittedly fairly incompetent, and so they feel a lot like incredible set dressing to give a perspective of just how small you are. A good amount of classes also spawn with anti-titan weapons, meaning they serve another purpose, boosting the player's point economy and letting them get closer to playing the ever-enticing pilot. Titanfall already has an economy and matches already with Titan Charge, but after you max out your Titan Charge, you stop getting rewards. There's nothing more to build to after you get your Titan past their core, which is fine, but it can lead to unhealthy behaviors of players playing like cowards to preserve their precious Titan. A core can help you win the game by scoring points, but let's be frank, players don't care about winning the game. To successfully get a player to engage in a system like this, the rewards for engaging with it have to be personal. In grunt mode, everything you're doing is always giving yourself points no matter the situation, always building up your personal economy regardless if you're already a pilot or not. 
it is a little entertaining how much better this mode works with Titanfall 1's maps. They weren't originally designed with the added mobility that's in Titanfall 2, and so are significantly easier to traverse by Grunt's inspectors. That's not to say Titanfall 2's maps are worse, though. Glitch especially works really well thanks to its compact centralized layout which consistently keeps the pace high. Titanfall matches do have a progression to them. Everyone begins as a pilot until someone does well enough to be the first to fall. After the first few minutes, though, this progression halts and becomes a little bit of a mess as people get their titans. Any sense of consistent pacing is lost. That's not inherently bad, but starting the player at the bottom and forcing them to work their way up would extend that consistent match pacing a little longer. It wouldn't really work perfectly without other changes, though. Titanfall matches can already snowball pretty extensively if someone gets their titan especially fast and uses that to catapult their team to an early victory against people who realistically can't really fight back for an extended period of time. For an official true expansion of attrition by respawn, here's what I would recommend with all that game design experience that I don't, uh, have. Starting as a grunt, you get points the same way that Ender's grunt mode works now. As you reach point thresholds, you get, potentially permanent? access to playing more powerful units like Spectres and eventually Pilots, but playing these classes rewards you with less and less points depending on how powerful the unit is. If you take out a Pilot as a Grunt, you're going to get immediately catapulted ahead in points, whereas a Pilot taking out another Pilot is just standard fare. Not only does this work as a challenge for skilled players, it also serves as an extremely natural comeback mechanic for struggling players and teams, which Titanfall is severely lacking in. Whether these point boosts would also apply to the score required to win the game would be up to respawn. I don't think that they should, I would make them solely personal rewards. A Spectre destroying a Titan isn't going to end the war any faster than a pilot doing the job. These points could work like how they do in Ender's mod in Battlefront 2, where you spend them to play specific units, or they could work as thresholds you have to reach before something is unlocked, like how 2005 Battlefront functioned. The natural progression is to eventually let you call in one of those Titans yourself, which for themselves would probably require significant balance changes to make this work. Far too many for the scope of one mod, and to set your points back significantly regardless of which point system respawn were to go with. Titans would need less one-shot weapons like Ion's Tertiary Laser and Tone's 70mm Tracker Cannon, and more like the Monarch's Chain Gun and Legion's Predator Cannon, so that it requires consistent tracking from the pilot and doesn't let randoms get beamed out of nowhere. Those who don't like Titan combat are no longer literally throwing by letting their Titan walk around as an auto-Titan. They can use their points elsewhere to play something like a pilot or whatever new classes respawn can dream up. Maybe a commander who can call in drop pods and specter squads, perhaps? Hell, stalkers and reapers could be playable on top of being match set dressing. A little mechanic I've always wanted to see implemented in some game, especially Titanfall, is more control over the AI grunts that are on the map. You could totally hijack the point system for this and call in AI for a price, any points that they earn being netted back towards the player that called them in. Maybe call in a squad of a class for some factor of its price? depending on the AI's competence costing either more or less than it would cost to just play yourself. Saving a bunch of points to call in two AI titans as wingmen for your own sounds like a hell of a lot of fun, and it would give the average Titanfall player their first friend. I'm not saying Titanfall 3 necessarily needs a commander class, but I would main the hell out of it. With official support, all of the different classes could have unique customization in the same way that pilots and titans already do. You could have a Grunt loadout, a Spectre loadout, a Pilo loadout, as well as a Titan loadout. Alternatively, a simpler way of doing this would be to give you one loadout and gradually unlocking different parts of it as you go through the ranks, Spectres getting Ordnance and a Double Jump, and Pilots getting your choice of Tactical and Wall Running. I don't think these systems necessarily have to be mutually exclusive either, the latter option could simply be an opt-in. Titanfall's art design is already banger, but I think different units could still be better differentiated, which is something that would be pretty invaluable for a mode like this. With the omnipresence of skins, you can't really differentiate based on colors, and instead you have to rely on shapes. Grunt's designs are already extremely round, while Spectres are very angular with their bizarre box head, and these are really, really fantastic and make it very easy to tell them apart quickly. Pilots, on the other hand, could use some work. At a glance, you mainly tell them apart from the rest of the battlefield by animation and positioning rather than what they look like. The worst case is sadly the most popular, as grapple pilots have, at least to me, such a similar profile to Grunt's that it makes them incredibly difficult to tell apart when stood next to each other. On top of that, their visor isn't visible enough for me to notice it easily, but I will admit this might be a raw eyesight diff. Regardless, there are plenty of ways that pilots could be better differentiated, such as playing into the Blacklight Retribution Helmet enormous square designs, which several pilots like Blisk and Kane already do, adding the lens flare to their visors that's in all the promotional material, giving them a more distinguished outline similar to what's in something like Valorant, or plenty of other changes. I'm sure Respawn can work something out. If I really had to ask for anything to be in a potential, purely hypothetical third title, it'd be the neat little set pieces at the beginning and throughout matches. 
matches. No other game I've ever played matches how Titanfall 1 made me feel like I was playing a scripted shooter campaign in a multiplayer match. I was much younger when I played it, which definitely plays into this, but I remember it genuinely feeling like magic. I know people didn't like the narrative elements that much because they're not a very good substitute for a full-on story mode, but they were incredible for what they were, and their absence in Titanfall 2 is sorely missed by me. Now, if you are watching this video when it releases, there will probably be a lot of people playing Ender's Grunt mod on Northstar. The install process is so insanely complicated. You, you launch Northstar, you type Grunt in the server browser, and then you join one of the servers listed there. That's it. If you want to play it on your own, this mod is incredibly customizable, because of course it is, and you can edit mod.json to spawn 7,000 stalkers if you want, though it'll probably crash. In the description, I'll have a pre-made mod.json file that is basically chaos mode, and it will almost crash at the beginning of every match as this happens. Feel free to edit it yourself and raise or lower any values as you wish, just make sure you add this line, also in the description, to this file, otherwise your game will eat shit and die. Don't give each team more than 12 squads of grunts or the source engine will absolutely crash. Believe me, I pushed it to its limits. Although, let me know how many titans the game can handle before it combusts. Give it a try and send Ender some love. Now, how applicable do you think this type of game mode would be as a successor to attrition? I am fully aware lots of people would be irritated if they couldn't play a pilot anymore, so I don't think it would work as a replacement. As an alternative, though, I could see it working incredibly well. Call it advocacy mode or something. Thanks to Emmy for their reckless financial abandon. Both them and the rest of my patrons are wonderful people. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, you know the drill. And have a good night.